plug here because anybody here that's on roaming right now, if you're outside of France when you're here, you should use his app. I've been using it. It's awesome. So he's the chief architect here um, of Onovo, which helps you a lot with roaming charges. So that's amazing. Um, he's really into big data. He's into social dynamics, into visualization, and he's been having a lot of fun analyzing data in the Android market, even though your app's on, is it on Android as well? Or? Yeah, yeah. So it's Android and iPhone, is Onovo. Um, but he's gonna talk about the fun that he's had with that. So I hand it over to Yuval Ariaf. Thanks, Jared. So um, a while ago I started uh, working with the Android ecosystem. I started developing apps for Android. And one of the first questions I asked myself was, um, what do people want to see in apps? What's important to them? What makes an app a really good app? And what I realized pretty quickly is that people have already answered that question by the millions. And I'm talking about reviews in the Android market. So there are roughly 300k apps in the market, millions of reviews. So the data is all out there. Now, the question is, how do we turn that data into information? So what I try to do first is answer a very simple question. What are users saying about apps? You know, just the words. And uh, that's a basic question, but it can prove this concept that you can look at the apps, look at the reviews, and derive something out of it. So what I did is I wrote a little program that goes over the reviews in the market and just picks out those words. I took those words and I put them on two word clouds. One for five-star reviews and one for one-star reviews. And I'm going to let you guess which one is which. <laughs> now, it seems that if an app is good, it can be a lot of different things. But if it's bad, well, it mostly just sucks and on occasion, useless. So this is, this is interesting. And it shows you that you can actually say something from these reviews. So what I try to do next is I try to see what other issues are people talking about when they're talking about reviews, and apps in reviews. And uh, what I did is um, I wrote another program that goes over all of the reviews. Only this time it did something a bit different. What it did is it sorted all of these reviews into categories, into issues, based on, uh, for example, what you see here. And uh, what I got from that is not only the issues that people were discussing, but, only, but also the popularity of each issue. So these are the top three popular issues. And uh, you can see things you might have uh, thought, uh, thought of yourselves. But the important thing to see here is um, don't fall in love with these numbers, because these numbers only tell you the less interesting half of the story. Because these numbers talk about popularity. And popularity doesn't necessarily imply importance. So with that in mind, this is, by the way, the full uh, set of results. With that in mind, I try to answer another question, which is which issues are more important than others? And that was pretty tricky to do. I did it uh, at the end with, uh, with two techniques, one of which I'm not going to talk about in length, which is detecting emotions in reviews and a sentiment analysis. But the other one, what I actually did, ended up doing, and I'll show you the results in a second, is trying to see out of each category how many reviews feature these app removal reports where users are saying, I can't take, take this anymore, I'm getting rid of this app. And these are the top three disturbing issues. And um, what you see at the top two, it's nice to see that they're both privacy related because there has been a debate about whether the Android permission model is good enough at safeguarding users in this kind of open environment. And I think this is at least a small testimonial to the fact that it sort of is. Now, with this in mind, what I tried to do is I really wanted to show you uh, a good use case that will take this past just the numbers. But that's a very, very difficult thing to do because I'll have to compare two apps that are virtually identical except for their permissions, if, if I want to show you for permissions. And, you know, same user experience, same user base, everything the same except for permissions. Now, luckily for me, in October, Angry Birds Rio got an update with a lot of new permissions. And some of them didn't take quite well with the crowd. And what we're going to see in a second is the review patterns for Angry Birds Rio compared to Angry Birds Seasons in October. So you see that in October, Angry Birds Rio got actually more one-star reviews than five-star reviews, which is incredible considering how popular these games are. Of, that, that was offset later by, uh, by a campaign that uh, Rovio did to, uh, to balance it to boost the reviews back up. Now, so far, what I've talked to you about is what we can learn about apps from reviews. So I'd like to quickly show you what we can learn about the reviewers themselves. I'm going to focus on something that's very uh, specific, which is how the review system is being abused. And I'm going to talk to you about two things. 
One, which is uh, bot reviewers, so people in the organization who are systematically promoting games in the reviews of other games. This is very common in the market. And another thing is market trolls that only write one-star reviews to, uh, to bash the competition. Now, on top of everything I've just showed you, you can apply some very neat controls. You can control for category, you can control for time in the market, you can control for pricing models. So basically, if you come to me and tell me what your service is about, what your app is about, I'll tell you where you should put your focus. So thank you very much. You'll have to find me off stage for that. Thank you, Jared, and thank you for listening. And I'll see you guys at the party. Thanks, Yvonne.